Hello, this is your friend and neighbourhood weep, the Eisenberg here, and welcome along to my review for episode 24 of Rising of the Shield Hero, titled Guardians of Another World. So without further ado, let's head on over this way and see the review. So, right, okay, where do I start? Huh. Well, a Just give me a couple of seconds to process. Okay, it all started out okay because obviously it kind of looked like a recap from the previous episode, it's like in this picture here, where they found that they, there was a dragon hourglass underneath the water close by a Calmira. And obviously in the film I was kind of like thinking if a wave attacks this place people are going to die. Obviously kind of that say the hourglass showed that in two days the wave would hit their current location. So now Fumi used his teleport skill to teleport him, Raftali and Philo back to the capital so they could speak to the Queen and basically she immediately put together an army to fight the wave. Um, it's quite likely that this wave will occur out at sea, which it did, and now, Fumi mentions that <laughs> the Queen is quicker to mobilise and do something about a possible world, en world ending event. This is Joker. And also I've infiltrated the theatre. And then, like the previous king. I mean, if he was still in power, he would do sweet nine about this, to be quite honest. Um, so what it was, was this cool thing happened when the wave properly came in and when the skies turned a purpley red. All of the ships that were in the Queen's army were teleported along with the shield hero to the exact spot that the wave was going to happen. Okay, and this is obviously just saying that the, the Queen arranged the ships. And that they made it. And I basically know for me it's kinda of obviously praising the Queen as to say he's amazed that she could get an army together quite quickly in such a short amount of time. Uh, you know, obviously kinda of Melty makes a point here saying that dealing with the waves obviously is the duty of the royal family as well as the heroes. Um, obviously, I think it's Nefumi that brings up this topic as well, because he's saying, will well, the people of Carmilla, Carl, Mira be okay? And yeah, it's just like, obviously, Queen's like, obviously, yes, they will, because the, the guy, the weird guy that they met when they went to the island in a couple of previous episodes ago, El, Errol, Habenberg, he basically, as soon as they heard that there was a wave coming, he basically, he basically cleared the island out of all its inhabitant, inhabitants, so basically no one would get harmed. Basically, it's obviously something between the Queen and him talking, and then basically we need everyone out of the way, like the, from the general public out of the way, so that the heroes can obviously do their job. Now, it was all right and all that, because they managed to pick off all the smaller things. And obviously then the big huge thing came in, and it was a big huge whale. That kind of reminded me of the white whale from ReZero. This is the Joker. I've infiltrated the theatre. Also, as it made its appearance, it was like big and like kind of presenting itself like a big ominous threat. 
So, I mean, all through this, I noticed that Lark had a strange way of kind of holding himself. Uh, what I mean by that is, he's, you see he was thinking about something, and he was like, I suppose that, because obviously the thing he said to him, that, can you help us with this huge whale? And you're know, like, well, he's like, well, suppose we could do that first. So, I mean, him, uh, Nefumi, Lark, Terry and all that, they all work together. I feel this, like, the finishing move with a big, huge, like, kick to the, the whale's fate, to the whale's, uh, underneath the whale's chin, to kind of knock it out. And obviously, yeah, the one with that as well. But then, Lark, and I knew he would do this because it seemed too good to be true. He started off as like ulterior motive because he said to, he noticed that um, Nefume was a shield hero because I think he did notice in the last episode he just didn't say anything. And he's like, well, me and Therese are heroes from another world. Basically, it's basically a, a kind of Inception kind of thing, where it's a dream within a dream, but in this anime, it's like a world within a world. Because he said that they came from another world to this world to basically destroy the shield hero. And I'm like, well, why the hell are they doing that? Because, I mean, obviously Therese said that they, during the fight between the two parties, that... Her um, bracelet that Nafumi made for her refused to basically be used against the person who created it, which was a which was kind of good because I thought that was like, yeah, well maybe he, when Nafumi makes stuff, he unconsciously kind of puts a, a thing on it, and just to say like if it's going to be used against him after he's made it, then he puts a limit on it, on purpose, so that it can't be used after a while against him. But obviously it was a great fight between the two, and then it was like Lark realised that, he was like, well, if you're this world's heroes, because basically the three other heroes, as the three studios, as Nefumi calls them, were completely useless against Lark. And... The Queen seen this and she wanted to kind of help Nefumi, obviously. And then Therese turned around and basically attacks the Queen. And then the Queen's like, well, those people that... I can't remember what the Queen said, though, but she's like saying, attack them, Lark and Therese, because they are enemies now. Because obviously Therese turned around and basically, basically attacked the Queen from far away. As I can remember rightly, I don't know if she did or not, but obviously you guys, once you've seen this review, I suggest that you go and kind of watch the the episode, because this is just obviously like a kind of review of my thoughts of it. Um, I mean, obviously Lark was impressed with uh, the way that Nafumi was, him and his party were like working together. And then obviously Lark used an attack that was a reverse damaging attack thing. Forgot the actual proper name of it, to be honest with me, to be honest with you. Basically it was an attack that he attacked the shield hero, Nefume, and even though he was able to block it, it kind of still hurt him. And obviously it's like back and forth, back and forth, like I always say. <laughs> Because I know I say this kind of bit in like my reviews when it's like like boring bits just to kind of like forward the review on a bit just to keep myself like and I get to the best bit. And you know, the best bit is the like true reveal uh, that their Lark and Therese's world is in trouble so that's why they're there to destroy the shield hero. And obviously in their own words they said something completely different, but that's what I got from reading between the lines. Um, 
But then I'm thinking, why are they doing that? Because they could just ask the Fumini's party to go with them to their world to help them out. Because obviously they said that they obviously Lark and Jere said that they are heroes as well. But obviously from their world, obviously. Um, Melty obviously was watching all this happen. And because she said that, yeah, she's part of Nefumi's party, even though she's not there at the minute with him, but obviously she's there with him the new because she came with the Queen, her mum, to help with the wave. Um, she basically asked this green-haired lassie, or I will remember her name eventually, to take her back to where Nefumi is to help him. And obviously he, she just based, he was a... Her purpose was to basically help Nafumi figure out what he needed to do. She didn't say it, but with the words that she said to him, he figured it out. Because he obviously used this tactic, so it was like he put a airstrike shield behind um, the lark. So he was, obviously during the fight, he would be knocked into it and knocked in. He... And obviously Lark was just like, I respect you Nafumi because you're obviously very good at what you do. And then obviously then it happened. We got to see Glass again. And she revealed that she was very impressed that Nafumi was able to do a lot of damage to uh, the amount of damage that he did to Lark without resorting to that shield. And Lark's like, what? And he's like, well, she turns and she says to Lark, she goes, Nafumi basically has a shield that you wouldn't be able to win against, Lark. That's what I got from what they were saying. Hey, I may be wrong, but hey -ho. So, she's realising that Nafumi basically is able to tank everything that they throw at them. And Nafumi just basically turns around and he goes, I was hoping not to see you again, Glass. Obviously because of the bad memories of the the wave that she first appeared in. And so basically all the cards are on the table now for the final episode of series one. Because Glass is there now and she flung everything she had at Nafumi to basically test them from what I can gather. And he was able to completely tank everything. And so basically now, how it left off was, it's now Nafumi, Raftalia, Philo, Melty versus Glass, Lark and Therese. So, I mean, obviously, in that, like, the next episode is the final episode, as I said before. And the next episode has got a very good title, if I, if I think, do say so myself. It's called it's going to be called Episode 25, Rising of the Shield Hero. And I'm like, okay. So, obviously, it's going to be either the fallout of the revelation... He obviously revealed of like the true motives of Lark and Therese and Glass. Or it's gonna be a continuation of the fight. But as I can see now so obviously it's gonna be either the fallout of the revelation he obviously revealed of like the true motives of Lark and Therese and Glass. Or it's going to be a continuation of the fight. But as I can see now, we won't know until episode 25 comes out in a week's time. <laughs>